Greetings friends, it's Laxer again with another great build. In this case, we actually bring Marvel into last epoch because we are playing Thor. And it's actually a very insane build. I've been playing this on like three streams already, a bunch of hours, trying to maximize it. It's not an easy build because despite having all the um, resistances max and all that, we still are squishy because the the sorcerer just is squishy man. But we are raining thunderbolts from the sky in classic classic fall tradition. So um, also you're constantly out of mana. So there's a bunch of things you need to know for this build to make it work properly, which I will show you in a second. It is not really a budget guide because you need a full set item set, I guess, and one or two uniques. And it's not even perfected, right? And it's level 88, um, but there's a bunch of things I could still make better. To make it OP as fuck. But it's already kicking pretty good. This is an empowered monolith, 100 corruption. I think this can do 150, maybe even 200. Just fine if you know what you're doing, like if you're listening to me and how to play it. Uh, higher than that, it depends probably a lot on your items, like a lot. But let's first, actually we should start with the items here because it depends on them. So uh, let's start with the items. For this build to work at all, <laughs> you need a bunch of items actually. You need three, like these two set items and this unique. The hopping of stars is obvious. Because this is what, I mean, you don't necessarily need it, but it makes it easier. This casts Meteor on crit, right? And the Meteor is converted to Lightning by this very set item. And this is basically the Thunderstorm. Instead of Meteors raining down, it does cast the Thunderstorm. So this is our, our fall thingy, right? You need this. It also gives us Lightning damage, a lot of mana. Shock duration, and if you go for the set item, also the great thing is the minus three spell mana cost in the implicit. If you go for the set item, you also get plus spell lightning damage per intelligence, so it actually shreds. And the other set item is this, Relatria's Storm Crown, plus one to lightning spells, very nice. Lightning pen, very nice. Int, very nice. Shock chance, very nice. Spell damage armor, cool. These two plus this, because it says down here, eight percent chance to cast Meteor on crit if above zero mana. So what we're doing is, we are focusing our Lightning Blast entirely on critical strikes, critting as much as possible, also our passives, because with each crit, basically sort of maxing the, the crit cap, with each crit we have a chance to auto-cast the Meteor, so you don't have to cast it yourself. However, if you want to do, if you want to kill bosses, you don't wait for the crit to happen, you just keep right-clicking until your mana is empty. This shreds most bosses just in these two seconds. It's insane, actually. Really, really strong how much damage it does. Especially if you also keep casting this, you gain your arcane, um, you gain buffs and all that, so... Pretty good. <clears throat> you definitely need these three, okay? This is your minimum. But then, it can't really do high corruption, okay? Um, What helped me a lot was actually Twisted Heart of Ukeros, which is weird, but it's a key thing. Like this build only works exactly with this setup, mostly because I also set up the passives toward it, but I'm going to tell you in a second how. Why did I go with this? 40% health, because our sorcerer is squishy as fuck, we die to everything super fast. So you also gotta learn a little bit how to kite, right? And avoid damage from the sources, keep running and all that using your flame rush properly, for example. But it also gives us plus one to all elemental spells and 7% of current health converted to ward when you directly cast an elemental spell. So the key thing is, if you look at this, if you keep spamming our lightning blast, you see our health goes down, but the ward goes up. The key thing is, we have a passive. Or is it a blessing? I don't even know, but you can have both. You gotta have a passive or a blessing, whatever it is you have with your build that leeches health on spell damage. So now I didn't do much, but if I actually hit enemies, I go up to like 2k health, like 1000 health or 1600 max and about 1000 uh, ward, sometimes even more. So we go up to 3k sometimes even. 
And with 3k health, we can tank most things. So the world, we really need to make any use of this guy. Otherwise, he dies super fast. Um, yes, everything else. This one is a key one. If you have the plus 3 to media, definitely go for this armor. I mean, this is insane because it also has 12 intelligence, which is just crazy. Um, but yeah, I tried this down here because we are always out of mana, right? We are always out of mana. So I tried this. As you can tell, I also had a great slam on that mana and meteor from my fire meteor build. The last one, 1% 1 increased mana regen per 3% uncapped lightning resistance. So I was stacking lightning res to gain more mana regen, but it's just, just not enough. In the end, it always ends the same. Because if you crit with your lightning blast, they are auto cast, the meteors auto cast. The meteor ca meteors ca uh, crit themselves, so they cast even more meteors, or thunderbolts in this case. And that just sucks your mana dry in a second, right? So it's super fast. So the mana region doesn't even do that much. Of course, then it goes back up again, but it was still always too slow. This is why I opted for the focus. We'll go into the um, spells in a second, but you have to realize if you play this build, I'm going to show you in a second. Also, we're super slow, but that's just what it is. Um, and if your crit chance is high, which it was in this case, as you can tell, it did not cast the thunderstorm once. There it is. And if it happens a lot in enemies, like there's a lot of enemies like you, but you see, my mana is completely dry. Now the mana region doesn't really do much here. So instead I go for the focus and then we back up way faster than I could wait for any sort of mana region, right? Especially if you just only stack lightning resistance, you lack on all the other resistances, which are completely capped here except for white, sadly. But um, that's what you... Fuck, dude. You as well. That was a 20,000 crit. So, this doesn't really work that well. I tried it for quite a while, it's, it's not cutting it, in my opinion. So, this is a great addition. Because you get also plus one to all your lightning spells, right? That's also great. Great addition. It's a rare find. But you kind of need it. And uh, this was actually the one I was talking about, sorry. Um... Just an exalted one with the meteor maxed out. If you have plus four to it and more spell damage, even better. But yeah, that's it. And this one, of course, you don't necessarily need it, but it's great because I also have 40% more health. Strength and cast speed. Cast speed is also very nice for us. So if you have it, slam it in there. Now for all the other items, I went with mana, mana region and resistances. Now, or crit chance in this case, but um, See, resistance, maxed out, health region, also nice. Void resistance, poison resistance, int, health, 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 health. So, the problem with this build is, the sorcerer just dies fast. Even with all that um, life leech from spells, a huge crit still destroys us easily, right? So maybe you can find a better way to actually make him tank here. If you play this build and you find a great way, Sorcerer survives better. Let me know in the comments below what you did. I want to know. Um, I tried a lot of things. I tried Endurance. I tried Block Chance. Um, yeah, in this case, I, I went with the Vault in the end now. Maxim maximizing the Vault through Leech. That seemed to work best. Or just stacking health. It just dies fast. The Sorcerer is just not very good right now. But it's the best we can do, right? Um, it's still good enough for Import Monoliths, right? I'm doing this just fine here, as you can tell. But you gotta kite a little bit, right? You don't stand in the enemies. I mean, there's no enemies here, really. Um, you don't stand right in them. You keep moving around, using your flame rush to get out of it. And then you just cast right-click your... <laughs> or there's the ambush. Okay, now we have not any mana left. You gotta focus real fast. So you gotta be fast with your focus as well. You rarely can use it to full. You just want to get to that burst after one second, and then you just right-click your meteors down. I didn't use Lightning Blast here at all, because as you can tell, see, I almost died there. It is still a tough build, because you have to kite a lot, because the Sorcerer just dies very fast. So you gotta learn how to do it with the Sorcerer here, or this build. Again, I'm... Pfft. 
But not, I'm, I'm not saying by any means that this is the best build. There are better builds for sure, but it's a lot of fun because it's four, right? Anyway, so what you do with it, what you go with is go with your health. And int is also a great thing because we have passives that give us bonuses if we are above 60 int. So you want to go with this, right? Throw intelligence in there, resistances, critical strike. Now, if you are luckier than I am, which could totally be the case, if we go on our blessings, Man, did it suck. This one could be 75% poison resistance. Uh, this one could be 75% necro res. And this one could be 75% physical res. If you get these, I have to check it's actually these ones. You can do this on um, Max Roll, for example, or on Last Epoch Tools. If you actually have these resistances in the blessings, which I would highly recommend, then you can stack your items differently. I was so unlucky trying these bosses and never getting what I wanted. So I had to throw all the resistances in my items, which is annoying. But there we are. And um, crit chance is of course nice, because if I get the resistances out of the items into the blessings, then I can throw in cast speed. <clears throat> cast speed is very nice for you, because cast speed means more damage from the lightning blast. Higher chance for crit, because more hits means more crit chance, technically, right? And it also means more life leech. Because we leech life with any spell hit. So, cast speed is the goat. And then, if you don't have cast speed, you can go for crit chance. Just base crit chance, even though, of course, 40% is rarely that much. If you can improve base crit chance, it's even better, but we can't do this with items. Uh, or crit multi later for more damage. What you also saw there is, when you're with bosses, you don't even wait for the this to trigger the meteors from your item, you just cast them yourself with right click, like in my case this one. Um, because this just does way more damage, it's way better. More damage faster also. So yeah, then idols, very simple really. You go with health wherever you can, especially percentage health. Health, health, or vault retention, yeah. Health and vault retention, that's what you do. Vault retention, health, health, vault retention. Okay, crit chance. I could change this though, it's fine. Health. Wall retention, wall retention, wall retention. Because you want to keep the ward you create with all your spells. And you need more health, so you gain more ward from that. There aren't really any... Subs the problem with the set items, because they still suck in this game, sadly. But it's the best we can do here. Is you are completely set, or like, blocked in these two slots with this thing here, right? Imagine I only needed this, then I could run a helmet that has four affixes on it. One of which is exalted. So we kind of lose eight affix slots here by running these. And if you have uniques, you can even craft them, right? It can, with legendary potential, you can throw on affixes as well. So set items just block you so much. I kind of hate it, but this is the only one that does that. So I'm gonna have to go with this. You can drop this, but I really like the lightning spells bonus and the int. And the set bonus is just so nice. I wouldn't do it. It's very good. But yeah, anyway, so let's go to the spells, skills, spells, whatever. Lightning Blast is very simple. First of all, you want to go down here. This is the first one you want to do. Base crit chance. And base crit is very nice. This maxed, then we go with double cast chance and crit multi. So you have a chance to chain it more, basically, or double cast it, rather. And you can also crit triple cast it, so it's cast four times. Then we want to have more chains, so it changes chains to more people. Cast speed, and we go with this here. Oh, I went with this rather. Um, because that gives us ward as well. We want to have anything that is ward. This is just one point is enough. We just want to have it at all. This one doesn't really do much, but this is good. Very simple. It's just the lightning blast isn't really so much about damage. It's 10k, it's fine, but it's really only to crit. So you cast your meteors, your thunderstorms. Now, flame ward, interestingly enough, we do not go for this, the lightning ward. Because retaliation is irrelevant. You know, and the flame ward retaliates and does damage. And with this, you could do lightning damage, which would make more sense because it scales with your items. But we don't do this for damage. This is only for protection. So we go with duration, obviously, and then we go with less damage taken, elemental damage taken, reduced, ward, 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 ward. A second charge, and it auto casts on stun. You can also remove this and cast it yourself and put it in, for example, uh, this one, less damage taken or more ward granted. 
You just want to gain more wall from that, very simple. Now, I did also go with the Flame Rush, because we have a lot of points in the Rune Master. The Flame Rush is very nice because it gives us, again, less damage taken. And with this, it's also less after the Flame Rush is done. So your buffs persist. Very nice. It also gains us ward. And um, the key thing, really, one of the key things, this one. Uh, you have to have the Smolder and Burn and this one, which turns it into Lightning. You can't see it, hold up. Okay, this broke, never mind. Uh, this one turns it into Lightning. And you need this because it also converts Fire Resistance Shred from all sources, sources to Lightning Resistance. So this shreds Lightning Resistance if you Flame Rush through them, right? Um, or explode at them at the end. So you Flame Rush towards, or like through the enemy, you have to channel it. It's a channel spell, I fucked this up, was it? And then it reduces the lighting resistance, so you do even more damage to them. Very neat. <clears throat> That's a great, great addition. I like the Flame Rush a lot. It feels better than Teleport to me. But pretty cool. Then we go to Focus. Focus, again, you gotta have these two here maxed. The Burst is the first one you wanna have. Because after one second of channeling, you gain a Burst. So you just usually go with one to two seconds Focus, and then you are back in the fight. You don't need to max out your mana with it. It's not the idea. Mana region, more mana region, and down here we have armor per intelligence, and we have resistances while channeling, and we have ward. So you can even tank damage a lot while you are channeling, okay? Don't hesitate, try it. If you are on your focus and people are attacking you, you should be fine. Alright, in most cases. Like, big attacks to kill you, and it depends a lot of as well on your resistances and all that. But it does actually work quite nicely. Now the media, which is our thunderstorm, right? It's actually very simple. The first thing you want to go down is to this mana efficiency. So it's less mana because that eats a lot. I think the base media is like 150 mana. It's insane. So go down this route. Then you put you go down here until you can put in this. More meteors, you want to have that. Rain of fire, even though it's rain of lightning. More frequently, that's cool. And if you can, if you have enough points, like I have 26, right? And you put this in here. You recover a portion, portion of your mana, very nice, from the Meteor cast, and this. You want to have this one max for sure. If you can't get rid of the mana, you want to have the Rapid Descent. Because if you click, you see it takes a second until it actually hits. There is these circles in the ground. And this is already very fast because I have maxed it. Usually it takes forever until they finally actually hit there. So you want to have this one maxed for sure, 100% more fall speed. This is also given by your item a little. This makes the fall speed even better. This is actually a low roll. Yeah, 39% is pretty low. It can go up to 60 depending if you are better in with your item lock than I am. So that's these. Very simple. I did try teleport, as I said. I did try other things. Did also, because you can turn the fireball into a plasma ball and create crits that way. Didn't feel as good because the key thing with fireball, you actually have to hit enemies. Yeah, like You have to aim. You can just... Keep hitting Q and move, and it sort of homes on the people around you mostly. Like it goes in all directions. The passives. The base one is pretty much always the same, really. It's Arcanist maxed. You can put one point into this to get the base 7%. That's very nice. Health and mana. I mean, you don't necessarily need this, but I kind of like it sort of a little bit. Even though later it's kind of useless, so you can also throw this into Knowledge of Destruction. Might actually be better. Again, I'm gonna have a building uh, below where I have the perfect setup put down. So you put these two into this, crit multi and crit chance even better. And this, of course, attack speed, cast speed, very simple. Then the sorcerer. Okay, momentum always, you always, like these three you always have pretty much, right? And this gives you int and a spell crit chance per intelligence at the five point bonus. Insane. You need this. Mana and armor, a little bit. We need the armor. I mostly go with this for the armor. The mana, 20 mana doesn't really do much, but the armor... You die fast, so you, yeah, you want to have a little bit of armor, you know? You gotta put two into this anyway, because you need this for sure. Mana region, 25%, and increased mana region per 100, max mana, 3%. That's key. This one, spell damage is not that important, really, but the vault retention. 
You want to keep the wall retention. You can put it to eight. Um, for some reason, I stopped at seven. I didn't realize that. It's fine. And you want to have this lightning damage and shock chance. That's cool. But the key thing is this lightning penetration and lightning damage leech. This is what I was talking about. The twisted heart of Eukaros doesn't work until you have at least the rift bolt over here. Okay. Because then it just eats your health and you die fast. You gotta leech health back. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. So you wanna you wanna have this max and then you go with the twisted heart item. Lost knowledge, you can play around with this. It worked quite nice for me. Um, you gain ward for current mana. If you use the skill, it costs at least 40 and the media costs a lot. So you usually gain a lot of mana from this. Pretty nice. Then this one, crit chance, 80%. Yes, please. Yes, please. And the crit multi, yes, please. More damage. There are a bunch of interesting ones here. We don't really need them. I wouldn't even go max this out first. We're gonna go into the rune master earlier with this. Probably at like, I would say when you have these three, I already have this one maxed out. Then you can put the rune master into the unsealed mana. And this, because then you really gotta look at survivability. And this one has especially the six point bonus. You passively gain water over time and the amount of water is tripled if you have at least 60 intelligence. This is why we need 60 intelligence. So we gain a lot of water from that. If you don't have 60 in, this doesn't do much. So you can go into this later. But initially, like once once you have the 60 in, it's very, very great. Health region, mana region, and double with 50 int. So we, you really got to stack int with the room masters. We know this. And this one for the crit chance. Super nice. 72% crit. Because then we can pretty much ignore crit chance on items mostly. We did it all in the passives to pretty much gain our almost 100% crit chance. So you definitely want to have this. Um, yeah, then later you can go into, what was it? Um, area, you want to have the area skills. This is very good as well. This doesn't do much because we have a staff. Um, I don't remember which one it was. Check out the build link below. It has it all in there. You can also go into there was yeah, elemental damage and elemental resistance. Then you can even remove resistances from your items. Also, it's tankiness. This one is pretty bad, by the way. I know it looks good, but it doesn't. Vault granted on lightning hit, 15 per point. Sounds great because we blast a lot. But this is a 10 second cooldown. That gives me 15, or like it goes up to times 8, so about 120 watt every 10 seconds. That is so bad. That is so bad. So you always got to read what the nodes actually say. Yeah, you can also go with more mana regen here if you want a spell sling on. That is not bad. Um, again, I'm going to put the, the link below. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Now for some gameplay. As I said, what you want to do is... You want to keep casting your, your lightning blast and you want to keep doing this pretty much all the time because it leeches health, right? Sometimes you are you have to really look at the mobs that are coming. When there are a lot of dudes there, then you just cast your you do your right click and just cast it straight in there like that. Because then the lightning blast is probably gonna um, take a while. Maybe, who knows? I mean, if there's more enemies, the chance is higher to actually hit them because you chain the lightning, but still. You have to look at the enemies, if the like it, these rings on the bottom, these circles. If they are appearing, then you can keep hitting lightning blast. If they're just not happening, then you're just gonna right click and actually start the fucking media. Unless you have enough um, cast speed and crit chance, so it pretty much, pretty much procs all the time, right? You have to figure this out for yourself in your current level and your playstyle. What works for you? Then. Um, you run out of mana fast, so you just, as I said, let's just do this. Let's get all of my mana gone. And you just really cast the focus for until this burst happens, 200, and then you're good again, and you keep going because you retaliate some some mana, right? Or you like re replenish it by casting it, and you go again, burst, then we're good. You also see the visual effect in the focus. Zip when it does this zip thingy, then you're good. Um, that's pretty much how you play the focus. Again, the focus also tanks you a little bit. So that's neat. Flame Rush, again, you have to channel. Um, you run through them. That gives them lightning resistance shred. That's pretty nice. 
And the flame ball pretty much happens consistently, especially at higher corruption than itself, because people stun you all the time. So it gets auto cast, right? Um, so you're sitting on the flame ball most of the time when it's ready. Um, but if you see you're low on health, you're getting low on health, then you can also just throw on the frame ball because it gives you also ward, and due to your ward retention, you keep a lot of it. Yeah, that's pretty much it for the Thor build. As good as we can make it right now. I want to do a Marvel lineup, but I think I can't really do this with Last Epoch that much. So Thor is pretty much the only one we can really do. I mean, Hawkeye is the marksman, but that's boring. Also, it's a girl, because we can't jump, swap genders yet. And... Hulk, I guess we can do with a Sentinel. He's not going to be green, though. But that's about it. Maybe you have an idea how we could actually build the other ones. Iron Man, I don't even see how we do this. Captain America is just going to be a shield. That's pretty boring. Anyway, so that's the four. We'll see if with 1.1 we can actually make more of it. Because Ward is going to be changed. Sorcerer is probably going to get buffed, pretty sure. So maybe we can actually make the four even better with the next cycle. Until then, have fun with it. If you have any more questions, leave them below and I will see you in the next video.